G'day guys, MTimTam here. Today we're going to learn about the rendering settings and how to access them within Octane Render Maya. So, to go to your rendering settings, click this button here to the people that should be familiar with the familiar uh, Octane, I mean, with the main uh, buttons. So, here we have the rendering view. Whoops. Here we have the rendering view. So, milliseconds and such. Uh, we have the rendering kernel type, uh, the the uh, rendering kernel settings within the rendering kernel type, and the additional. The additional is pretty much for animations and such, uh, and exporting. No, not the animations. Oh yeah, the animation, the unit scaling, tone whether you want the tone mapped, render and gray material or verbose mode. Uh, so let's. So this is the direct lighting uh, option. Um, it's in the Octane Render Settings tab. So let's go to, you can s uh, change your max samples, refresh, your filter rate. So put that to zero. Um, Ray Epsilon, I've always still managed to stuff that name up. And the Sliders here seem to also be overpowered, and your R uh, Rob, your Alpha Channel Two also works, as you can see. Very extremely useful. Keep environments and Alpha shadows, and that's the direct lighting for you. Next one is PMC. Uh, I mean, not PMC, path tracing. Um, as you can see, uh, it is picking up the hot pixels that my camera imager is using. Which okay, so now uh, we have the max samples filter pretty much the same as direct lighting except we also have the uh, ray counts so we can put that overclock all the way up to max depth and such and next is the PMC the uh, PMC same thing, uh, we have the Exploration, my favourite overclocking tool. Max rejects, caustic blur, max depth. We also have the same as alpha shows and keep material. All for realism. And next, we also have the channel info, pretty much the same as the other ones. Uh, here is that the channel info is here, and the other passes you have to click through here. So we have shading normals. We have the positioning pass, very useful for nuke, for nuke work. We also have the Z depth, and within the Z depth, we have to go to the imager, and we have to change the And to change the Z depth max, we have to change these settings here. So let's change this to about one. Uh, nah, two. About two point five. And that's good for Nuke After Effects for your depth of field. Next is the Material Alpha, which is good for cutting out, but it's only for Material Base. You want to do the Oh, it doesn't have the object one yet. Um, but yeah, good for cutting out stuff, but this is based on your materials, not based on your objects, which is a bit disappointing. Uh, but it will be added in later. Alright, so that's pretty much the rendering settings. I hope you enjoyed it. And next, we'll be working in the Hypershade editor. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.